Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. Today on the show, I have with me James Jude Courtney, who plays Michael Myers in the upcoming Halloween film. So, James, 40 years ago, one of the greatest horror films of all time had hit theaters. What was your experience like seeing Halloween for the first time? I uh, I was in college. I, I knew from the time I was in fourth grade I was going to make films, so I had always been an avid film goer. Um, I, it was in undergrad and I, I, I went to see it in the theater. I don't even remember I, the date I had. I remember her name. I don't even remember <laughs> she looks like, but I remember the film, man. I walked out of that and it was a game changer. Okay. Now, you know, 40 years later, now you're playing Michael Myers himself. How did you get the role and what was the process like, you know, preparing for these, this iconic character? Uh, you know, I, I got into the place in my career where I'm focused completely on, on writing and producing my own material. So, um, I made a decision that the only time I would work is if a friend called me and, um, and, and which has happened, you know, since I sort of backed away from, um, you know, being in front of the camera full time and, uh, I got a call from, uh, Ron Hutchinson, the, the stunt coordinator on the film who had done a couple of, uh, a couple of the Halloween films and, uh, he said, Hey man, we're doing it on Halloween. I was like, great. And he, he, I said, uh, he said, well, you know, I read the script and, and it, it requires, I told Malik Akkad and uh, David Green that it requires a, you know, someone with really deep acting chops, but it was also a really good stunt man. And there's, you know, not a whole lot of those guys around and, but I happen to know one. So, you know, he gave me that call and, um, uh, I went down, I, I moved back to South Carolina where I'm from to, uh, just, just focus on, you know, getting my films made. And, and it just so happens that they were shooting here in South Carolina. So, um, I went down from Columbia, my hometown down to Charleston where David Green lives and, uh, and Danny McBride lives and, um, uh, did an audition and, and it was, it, you know, the, the process for me in preparing was I watched the original. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, this is unlike any other character. So, you know, for me, I mean, I, I studied with Stella Adler, you know, Marlon Brando's coach. I had a private coach from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I mean, I have, you know, I have very definite protocols I follow when I create a character so that every word has meaning, every action has meaning, every character has a backstory. But with this particular character, it was all about energy and, and embracing sort of in a shamanic way, just embracing the spirit of Michael Myers that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill had created. And that Nick Castle had embodied so intuitively and creatively. Um, so I just embodied that energy. I embodied the movement. And uh, when I went down to the audition, um, they put me on tape. It was, uh, it was a long audition, a lot of talking about past experiences and a lot of movement. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I, I left the audition and I mean, you know, it's, I've said this before, it's, it gets so crazy that I, um, I wasn't even out of the parking lot there at Rough House, and uh, I got a call from Blumhouse in Los Angeles asking my availability. And sometimes, man, that can be the kiss of death. Yeah. I mean, you know, if they're if they're all excited about you, then it's like, ah, oh, dude, I ain't got it. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else has got it. I hadn't even got to the freeway, and they said, "Hey, David Green wants you to come back and, and meet him." So, um, you know, it was it was one of those things, man, that was just meant to be. Yeah. Uh, it was just the perfect storm. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you must have been, you know, super excited, and you got to actually work with, um, you know, Nick Castle, uh, for a little bit, you know, which was great to see him come back to the franchise. What was it like working with him? And did he give you any advice for stepping into this role? Um, well, first, you know, when, when, when I, when I was cast, David, uh, called me and, you know, of course, like any director does, and we started to have our conversation about character, which was very limited. He didn't tell me to do anything other than, you know, he wanted cat-like movements and, and, you know, I, had already, I mean, I, I had used a cat to design my dear Kinderstoke character in, in, um, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Um, so, so then he said in that conversation, he said, Hey, we've invited Nick back to do a cameo. Do you mind? I mean, you're the man, you're Michael Myers, you're the shape, but do you mind if Nick Castle comes back? And I was like, Oh man, you kidding? No, <laughs> no, I'm honored, man. I mean, that'd be awesome to have Nick back. So Nick didn't come in until like the, I think it was the second, it was like the third week, I think. Um, so I'd already been knocking it out every day and, and it had been deep in what I do. And, um, no, Nick, Nick is super, super gracious and super creative and a very funny guy. 
Um, so all my time spent with Nick was just like hanging out with him. I mean, I have a new best friend, man. I have a new friend for life. He's just That's a awesome. really awesome human being. And, um, you know, we did talk about his approach versus my approach. And his approach was, I just did what I was told. I just walked. Well, yeah, kind of, <laughs> except that Nick Castle is super creative and super intuitive. So he really naturally created this iconic character. And then it was my job to take that energy and embody it. And, um, so it was, it was just wonderful being around him. Um, but you know, I think for a moment they wanted us to do some behind the scenes, like him showing me how to walk, but that would have been cheesy. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't true, you know, and Nick is just so gracious and honest. I mean, he's just like, you know, dude, you know, I did it. Now you're doing it. Let's have fun. That's awesome to hear. seems like, yeah, he's, you know, he's a really cool down to earth guy. And speaking of, uh, you know, coming back to the franchise, you also obviously had, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis and John Carpenter return, which was, you know, a pretty big deal, especially for a lot of the fans. Um, can you talk about what it was like, um, you know, working with them, um, especially I imagine uh, working with Jamie Lee, um, you know, a lot more um, and what it was like meeting them? Oh, man. Uh, well, when Jamie got there, she introduced herself. But um, after that, we didn't communicate for about a week. I, I, I can't, time, time kind of goes away. It was, it was a while that we didn't communicate. I wanted to give her her space because, you know, my, what I was doing, what she's doing are very different. And so, and she had a lot more complex emotions to deal with. Then all of a sudden one day in makeup and hair, she walked over and just, just, we started talking about a particular scene. And after that, it was just like, I mean, she's an amazing human being. She's an amazing, she's an amazing, you know, a, accomplished actor and um, a high creative she's an amazing woman. She's grounded and centered and compassionate and intelligent. And I mean, you know, in this hashtag me too era where women are seeking empowerment, that is a role model. I would say for any woman to look at, to look towards because she's really got her shit together and working with a consummate professional like that, man. I mean, she's physically gifted. She is 100% in, um, gives 100% in every scene. So it was, it was, it was really, and then the personal side of her is just such a joy to be around. She's quirky and funny, um, does not suffer fools gladly, which I really appreciate. And, you know, so that was really amazing. I, I, John Carpenter, we didn't really work with. He, he was there. He's the OG man. He showed up. He sort of, you know, he's like the Pope. He showed up and gave his blessing and, you know, and, uh, hung out a bit. And, you know, those of us who were sort of in the, um, in, in various driver's seat, got to hang out with him a bit and talk to him a bit and, you know, but it, it wasn't necessarily working with John. I think anything that John did was done prior to or outside of what we were doing on the set. Gotcha. Now let's, uh, you know, let's go back to that first day on set where, you know, you were the shape and put on the mask for the first time. Uh, what was that experience like? Oh, that was intense, man. Uh, we were doing rehearsing a very, a very complex shot um, prior to the first day of photography, and um, Christopher Nelson shows up with you know a little suitcase, a little Halliburton leather bag, and and uh, so we all ran back to because uh, we were in practical locations, we were in, in private homes, and uh, so we went back into a private room. Ron Hutchinson, the you know, cast, the, the uh, stunt coordinator, and David Green, and Danny McBride and Jeff Freely and uh, let's see, and Ryan Turek and and um, uh, and Chris pulls the mask out and it's like whoa and, and and so he walks over because every time I put it on he assisted me it wasn't it's not something you just slap on yeah um, so he he put it on me and everybody in the room just went whoa <laughs> and as we're playing with light. And, you know, I mean, like Chris would, you know, and, and Mike Simmons, the, the DP would like kind of, you know, they would have me move in different, I was kind of like in a hallway in that room, like at, at the entrance to the room. And, um, man, the moment I put it on, it was like, you know, I already knew what the shape felt like. I, I because I could breathe them in, own them, like you'd be a, a part of me. And then I would breathe them out. And, and so I could bring them in and bring them out. To, I mean, I didn't know I could stay sane if I didn't. But putting that mask on was like, that was the essence that was necessary to, to make it a complete character. Um, Christopher Nelson and I co-created this character. 
um, I have to say, because that the mask and the work we did together every morning before I went on set um, was was deep. And and uh, of course, his work on the mask was just beyond. I mean, beyond. I mean, it's it's just amazing. Yeah. No, I remember. Uh, you know, that's that's been one of the big things throughout the uh, the franchise is you know being able to uh, get the mask right. And I remember you know when that was first revealed. Um, just, you know, saying, wow, this, you know, is probably the, the best mask, you know, since they've had, uh, since the original. So definitely, uh, both of you guys did, you know, a fantastic job, uh, with that from, you know, what we've seen so far. Um, you know, you said that you, you know, you have background, uh, you're a stuntman. What are some skills as both a stuntman and working behind the camera that you've picked up throughout your career that you, uh, brought to this role? Well, you know, I, th- I think um, there's a, there's a, a great um, great old uh, comedian actor, comedic actor named um, oh, what was his name Knight? Oh, he was on uh, he was on Mary Tyler Moore, Ted Knight, um, and he had given me once. You know, I had this long conversation with him, and he was very generous. And and I was very young; I hadn't I hadn't done anything. I got to Los Angeles, and I was still working as a tour guide, and I was waiting on tables before I got Conan, and he gave me this wonderful gift. He said, emulate people. But when you, you know, so if you want to be a really great actor, you emulate people, but when you emulate them, don't do it from an intellectual perspective, do it from an energetic, try to pull that person into, you know, what they're feeling and be so empathic that you know exactly what they're feeling. You know, what drives them, what makes them move, what makes them move their face. And so, you know, the, this whole thing with, um, you know, I mean, that I sort of carried into, even though I studied with Stella Adler and I, you know, I did the work I did. It's the energetic sort of um, you know, being able to move in a certain way because you're driven by something that's inside you and compels you. Well, as a stuntman, um, oftentimes, you know, you're working with actors or you're stunt doubling somebody. Like I, I was a stunt double for one of the leads on a series called Babylon 5. So, whenever I doubled him, I had to really embrace his energy and move like he moved because he had a different body than I had. He moved yep. differently than I do. But, you know, all that experience, um, the thousands and thousands of fights I've done, I mean, gosh, and, and the Conan show at Universal Studio, I did easily 3,000 high falls and 7,000 sword fights. I mean, wow. but, you know, your your body becomes this well-oiled machine and you become very, very comfortable with the way it moves. And it is the largest instrument that an actor has. And so I'm really actually kind of amazed that more actors don't endeavor to at least learn how to use their bodies in terms of stunts, in terms of fighting, in terms of falling. And, and um, But I'm actually, on the other hand, really glad they don't because I got to make a living doing that. You yeah. Know? yeah, no, I, I totally understand that now. Uh, One of the things that, you know, I've seen brought up, um, you know, by a lot of the fans online about Michael Myers is, um, you know, his age in this film and, you know, saying that at this point, you know, 40 years later, uh, he would be too old to do some of the stuff that he's able to do. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? Well, dude, I'm 61 years old and I um, and I still had a body of a 35 year old athlete. I mean, I have the blood work of a 30 year old. I, you know, if I can do it, so could Michael Myers. <laughs> so, you know, there was no, there was no like, you know, David Green or, you know, there was no like, hey, you need to act like an old man. No, I am a 61 year old man and I do do what I do with my body. And, and so it's totally within the realm of possibility, probability and reality that Michael Myers is in the kind of shape that I'm in and can do the kind of things that I do and therefore move the way I moved. Uh, no, I, I agree. Um, now, what would you say as far as, you know, the role of Michael Myers, what would you say is the most uh, challenging aspect that you had during this role? Uh, you know, the challenges, I mean, I, there, there was, I didn't have like a nanosecond of stress, anxiety, you know, apprehension. I mean, that's my wheelhouse. That's what I do. And I, and once I embraced the energy of Michael Myers, um, it was Okay, so I could say it was easy because it's what I do, yeah. um, but it's it's not because it's an, it's a very physical role. It was very physically demanding. Um, a lot of the marks we had to hit, a lot of the um, the technical aspects were very very. Um, you know, you you you, you have, it would have to be a pro to do what we did. 
especially because a lot of the marks we had to hit, a lot of the complex camera stuff we did, um, we would do without the benefit of having, you know, ground marks. And without, I mean, so there was a lot of, um, there were several or more than several aspects of it that were, um, you know, that were very physically challenging or that were very technically challenging. Um, but that's the fun of it. That's why we do what we do, you know? Um, and the, the, you know, the only, I, there was one particular thing that I was doubled on, which David Green has already talked about, uh, which was a stair fall. And, you know, and frankly, I was happy to have a 30 year old guy come in and bust his ass because <laughs> stair falls hurt. You know? <laughs> and, and I'd already had a contusion on my, my glute and bruised arm and bruised ribs. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I'll let the young guy make a few bucks and take a, take a hit. There you <laughs> That's <are>. fine. <laughs> But other than that, man, it's me. It's me, and it's you know, it's Nick. When you know, Nick is the first person that Jamie sees. Other than that, it's all me, except for the uh, stairfall. Oh wow! Now, so I want to kind of go into. I know this movie, you know, ignores, um, you know, pretty much uh, everything except for the first movie. Um, one of my favorite entries in the franchise is Halloween Four, and you know, I just feel in that film, especially like the opening. There, it just oozes of that fall Halloween atmosphere. Uh, from what I, you know, what I've seen in the trailers, is it safe to say that we can expect a lot of that in this film as well? Yes, yes. I think I think what you're looking at, um, Pat, is you know I, I had the great honor of working so, with some of the finest filmmakers on every level in this film, and the attention to detail, the respect and homage for for you know, for the original and for, you know, for me, like when I go to movies, I have a thing called, I think I call the yeah, right quotient. So if I'm watching a film and I go, yeah, right. (laughs) And you know, I'll give one or two of those for free to a film, but if I get three or four or five, then I'm like, dude, you lost me. I'll still watch the film and I'll appreciate the artistry and I'll appreciate the fact that somebody busted their ass to make the film. But after two or three, yeah, rights, I'm gone. And for my money, I, I, I can't say that there's any yeah rights in this one. Okay. I, I'm super excited then to, you know, to see this. I'm actually, uh, tomorrow I'm going to, uh, Salem, Massachusetts and, uh, Ryan Turek's going to be uh, there and, uh, they're showing the film at 1130 at night. So I definitely, am uh, you know, I'm pretty excited to see this. So. Awesome. Awesome. Ryan, Ryan is an awesome guy, man. And this, this the whole thing would not have come together if it had not been for Ryan Turek. I was going to say, I think I mean, he was, he's the linchpin. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think I heard. Um, I believe it was it was either you or um, someone else from the cast that they had talked about that he yeah he kind of um, you know put a lot of this together. Well, I mean, he's he's a massive fan. He's got a tat of of the mask on his on his forearm. Um, he'll probably have a tat of this mask on his forearm, <laughs> but, but you know, and it's like, but he he's just this, has this encyclopedic knowledge of horror, and in fact, it was so cool hanging out with his his mom and dad and his sister on set because his dad and mom were saying, yeah, even as a kid, the whole basement was just filled with horror memorabilia. And it's like this, it's like this full on museum, and That's and um, awesome. and his enthusiasm for you know for the franchise and so he was the one who found out where it was and that it was available and put together universal and blumhouse and you know trancus international and, and miramax and he he made the whole thing happen man and and um and you know i don't have a debt of gratitude for that man because this is this is this was probably if not the the most joyful and fulfilling experience of my entire professional career man wow i mean it was just magic from beginning to end I was gonna say with all it just seems like yeah kind of the you know the perfect storm I remember when we started seeing you know bits and pieces of you know certain people coming back you know Jamie Lee John Carpenter um things like that you know it really seemed like this was uh you know it was just the perfect storm everything was coming together at the right time I just wanted to um just to go back uh, real quick to like the sequels have you have you seen all of them and um you know which one would you say is your favorite well, you know, I, I have, um, because I'm, I, I would see everyone when they came out. I mean, I see almost every movie, they come, unless I'm writing. If I'm writing, I don't see movies. But um, I, I would have to say um, the outside of the original. Yep. Um, the second is my favorite because it, 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 there, was a, there was a through line there. But also I'm kind of prejudiced because Rick Rosenthal and Nancy Stevens are friends of mine. <laughs> so... 
you know, I used to play tennis at, at their house in, uh, you know, off of Sunset Boulevard and, and, um, and, and, and so I, I had no idea that, you know, someday I'd be working on a Halloween film. Um, but I do really, really appreciate that. And I'm, you know, I've no, I'm, I'm very familiar with Rick's work and, um, and and I have to say, everybody's had their take, and you know, fans have their ideas of what's best and whatever. I mean, but for me, the original will always be. I, I mean, I've said this before, but it's like you know, in college, I knew I was going to make films. I, I and you know, the the two films while I I was an undergrad that really hit me were Rocky and Halloween. Like those were game changers, and you know, a game changer is a game changer, man. And nothing will ever compare to that. Yeah, I think. What, what hopefully what we've done is, you know, collectively on, on this one is um, pay as much respect and homage to, to the original and to bring in contemporary, you know, I mean, the film has changed a lot. I mean, yeah. the technology has changed, techniques have changed, the style has changed, what the audience want has cha- wants has changed. So I think, you know, this was a perfect coming together of some really, really talented people who all love Halloween. Everybody has their Halloween story on this film. Every single person has their story about Halloween. Every single person wanted to be there. Christopher Nelson and I would talk about this because we didn't, I mean, this was not a moneymaker, dude. We, this was not, this was not a fat paycheck for anybody. Yeah. I mean, you know, so Christopher Nelson and I were both like every morning because we'd spend an hour in special effects makeup together. And we were both like so many times we were like, dude, this is what I showed up for. This is what I signed up to do. This is, this is why I make movies. We were just so happy to be there. And, it, and it's so like, hopefully that will reflect in, in, in you know, I, for, for the audience, for the fans, I, I, I trust that that will reflect in what they see. I was say, yeah, usually when, when, you know, that many people on a project, you know, have, you know, that kind of passion for, um, you know, something like this, it's, it's usually pretty evident. So I'm, again, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to see this and for everyone else, uh, to see it as well. And since, I mean, since this film was announced, um, the level of hype, you know, has been insane. I'm sure, you know, you have an idea. <laughs> How does it, uh, feel to, you know, hear the overwhelmingly positive reactions that the film and specifically you have received after all this buildup? You know, man, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, and, 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 at the same time, humbling and um, it's really gratifying um, it, because it's, it's a lot of love, yep. you know. And and so at the end, like to, to, for me to to be a part of another person's joy, for any human being to be a part of another person's joy is is a true gift. And you know, you know, they say you know, pain shared is half the pain, joy shared is twice the joy. Well, I'm getting. I'm receiving all this love and joy from fans already. And the movie's not even out. They haven't even seen it, <laughs> you know, but I'm in communication every day as best as I can, man. I mean, the, the, the social media stuff is just over freaking whelming, oh. but I'm as best I can. I'm, I'm trying to communicate with the fans and the love is just, wow, man. It's, it's, it's like, it, I mean, you know, who cares about the money? It's the, the love, man. And, and so I, I'm so, I'm very honored. I'm just really honored. And I know I'm a really lucky guy. I'm the luckiest guy in the freaking world right now. So (laughs) I get to be part of it. You know, I mean, this is, and it it won't go away. That's the amazing thing. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I'm I'm sure, you know, it must be extremely uh, gratifying and yeah, you know, obviously as we're, we're getting closer and you get some more screenings and then when the film finally, uh, you know, hits theaters, you know, nationwide on the, uh, the 19th, I'm sure that's just going to, uh, you know, increase tenfold. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't wait, man. I'm doing the my first appearance because you know, my representative, uh, my agent, you know, wisely said, "Hey, man, let's just," you know, because I had offers immediately to make appearances and do cons and fonts and you know this kind of stuff. And and um, and you know, I was advised to hold off until the Halloween 40th anniversary yep. um, convention in Pasadena, and um, and I think that was a very wise decision. And you know, so now I'm going to get you know this thing that I'm dealing with daily on a on a you know day to day basis in terms of social media. I'm going to be able to go into this room filled with people who just love Halloween, and you know I'm going to get to be able to bask in that love and get to look people in the eye and smile and go, man, I'm stoked. Are you stoked? Yeah, I'm stoked. You know, <laughs> and just have this you know couple of days of just beauty and love, man. I'm I'm down with it. Yeah, and. I, you know, I mean, I hope you enjoy it, man. Uh, you know, it seems like, 
Um, you know, obviously you've put in a lot of work, so you definitely deserve it. Uh, the last thing that I just want to, you know, ask you is, you know, for someone who hasn't seen any of the previous Halloween films, because, um, you know, this is going to be trying to attract, you know, a new audience as well. Uh, what would you tell them going into this movie? You know, man, um, it's a complete film. It's a complete film. And, and, and the, like any, like any great sequel, um, it will subtly, but very clearly renumerate the past. So you're going to know if, you know, if you're, you know, if you have half a brain, you're going to be able to look at it and go and understand without even seeing the original, you're going to understand what the story is about, what's at stake, what happened and, you know, go along for the ride, man, because it's, it's a, it's a well-crafted film. It's a really well-crafted, I mean, every single person who invested themselves, you know, in this has, is, is at the top of their game. And so it's just going to be a really great ride for someone who's never seen a Halloween before who's never seen the original, you're going to get the whole, you're going to get it. And it's going to be, it's going to, it's just going to be a beautiful, it's a well, well crafted film. Just sit back and enjoy it, man. Awesome. Well, Hey guys, uh, Halloween comes out everywhere nationwide, October 19th. Uh, I just want to thank you again, James, you know, I really appreciate you, uh, taking the time out of your, you know, super busy schedule that I'm sure, you know, you have right now with the movie coming out. Uh, thank you for coming on. And, um, you know, just like I said, just enjoy this. Uh, you, you deserve it. Thanks, Pat. It's been a real pleasure uh, talking with you, man. And I, I, I look forward to hearing your comments when you've, uh, when you've seen the film. Oh, I, yeah, I'll definitely let you know. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, this has been a blast, man. Uh, yeah. Have a good one.